I got to get this going. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Health Transformation Webinar. This is Kate Archibald, and I am really, really excited to be with you guys today. We got some really cool stuff we're going to be diving into on peptides, um, continuing that conversation. And really, we're, we're going to be focusing on um, peptides that are going to increase fat loss, um, get your metabolism pumped up, as well as uh, increase uh, muscle. Um, so those of you that um, are wanting to get more fit, um, increase muscle mass, uh, this, is, this is definitely for you, and this is definitely for anyone and everyone. So um, it's going to be awesome. Yes, it is. Yep, we'll dive into some brand new medicine today. And uh, some of the things we're going to talk about is, is uh, IGF-1. We're going to talk about AOD-9604. Um, I just want to share with you because a lot of people have come into our clinic recently and they've, they've seen some of our team members and they said, man, you guys, you look different. What have you done? Um, you know, I had uh, someone uh, see me a couple weeks ago and they said, wow, I haven't seen you in about a month. You look uh, just all vibrant and, and ready to, to rock. And so um, I think uh, part of it is, uh, you know, maybe they're, they're just trying to be nice. But the other part is uh, this thing called peptides. And so what peptides are, if you have not um, you know, been in any of our previous discussions, or if you don't know anything about them, um, peptides are these phenomenal RNA structures, these protein structures that exist all over in, in the world. And there's 7,000 different amino acid chains. And an amino acid chain, all those different links of the chain are called peptides. And so if you, um, you know, look at what a, a peptide is, a peptide is what creates cellular expressions. So that could be RNA expressions. Um, these, these peptides are really critical for overall human health. And then they also help with the translation and transcription factor. So a cell, when a cell gets a signal from a peptide, a cell can behave and function in a certain way. And so we're going to be talking about some peptides that can change your life. And a lot of the research from peptides comes from this fundamental foundation that pharmaceutical companies have built up for about a decade. They've been studying peptides intensively. Well, peptides have been around since the 60s, but it was really about a decade ago where the pharmaceutical companies saw peptides as the next generation of medicine. And one of the very first peptides that ever got uh, FDA approval is thymosin alpha-1 which we talked about last week, and that thymosin alpha-1 actually had less side effects than the placebo did. And so it, the great thing about peptides is they're very safe. Um, there's low toxicity or no toxicity. They don't manipulate your body like putting a hormone into it would, uh, but they, they do change the, the cellular communication and cellular structure, similar to the way that like a, a stem cell treatment or an exosome treatment would do uh, for our patients. And these, these exosomes, or these, uh, excuse me, these peptides can be phenomenal because it's a very safe way to influence your body and get you the results you're looking for without all of the uh, hard, difficult work. And it's still going to take hard, difficult work. I'm not saying that, but, but these peptides can be life-changing and game-changing. Um, some of the peptides that I've used is cerebral lice, and I used that this morning, which is really good nootropic. It helps if you've had dementia, Alzheimer's, uh, TBI, they use it in the Russian hospitals. C-Max is another one. You can use it as a nasal spray or an injection. Um, IGF-1, which I'll talk about later. Uh, SARMs, which we'll talk about today too. So, so as you're going through this, feel free to ask questions as we go through it, but I'm going to share with you just some top peptides. We're going to try and make it through about three or four of these. But the first one we're going to start with is AOD-9604. Now, one of our team members here at East West, uh, she wanted to lose weight. And she got hangry. Her blood sugar was all over the place. And she just really didn't thrive. She would work out, but then she'd be sore and tired. And I don't know if this relates to any of you, but she just wanted to get uh, you know, a little more fit, but just didn't seem to be able to push through that, that barrier. Uh, she, you know, we tell people when you're healthy enough, then you're, you will lose weight, but we just had to get her healthy. And so we put her on the AOD 9604 
and she slept like a rock. She's been sleeping great. She went on this about a month ago and she lost five pounds the first week, five pounds the second week, not really changing a whole lot, but she noticed that she could recover quicker. She would do a workout um, and she would feel great afterwards. She didn't have the sugar cravings. Her appetite was nice and even. Her energy was nice and even. So it helped balance her blood sugar. The other thing that she noticed is it helped create a different shape in her body. And so I think that was one of the uh, critical things. It wasn't like she's just like losing water weight because she was still eating, but it actually changed the shape of her body. And so, so very interesting. So AOD 9604, if you look at it, this is a polypeptide and the sequence, you know, it's got this long sequence. If you guys want to dive in, you could, you could certainly dive in on that but it's got an excellent safety profile. And what it does is it works on the growth hormone molecule. And if you think about growth hormone, Kay, do you remember when you were younger and you had lots of growth hormone? Um, what was that like when you have lots of growth hormone? You, like your recovery time is, is super fast. Um, you just feel like you're uh, really, really strong, vibrant. Yep. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, just, just feel like a million bucks. Like growth hormone feels nice. Growth hormone is very nice. And so growth hormone, it also regulates fat metabolism because if you think about it, you don't burn fat when you're in the gym. Like that's what people think is, I'm just going to run this fat off. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. Actually, you lose weight when you sleep. And so the best time to, to get uh, fat burning is when you're sleeping because that's when growth hormone is, hormone is released. It looks like we had a question come in. Do you guys prescribe herbal medicine? Absolutely. Um, herbal medicine, nutrition, peptides, all kinds of great stuff. So yes, please come in or let us know what you, we can help you with. Um, so, so if you look at uh, growth hormone, it also works with IGF-1. So IGF-1 is a critical hormone in our body. We talk about insulin a lot, well, Kate, I don't know if you knew this, but IGF-1, we have 100 times more receptor sites in our bodies and in our muscles for IGF-1 when they, when, than when we do for even insulin. And so growth hormone wow. and IGF-1 are working side by side. Awesome. So, so, this, um, so this peptide that we're talking about, does it, have, it has both growth hormone and IGF-1? No, it's working those be those two pathways. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's working on the growth hormone pathway, which also triggers your liver to produce more IGF-1 and your muscles will produce more IGF-1, which are all fat burning hormones, some of your major fat burning hormones. And so what the AOD 9604, uh, what this does is this is AOD stands for advanced obesity drug. Now this does not need to be used if you're if you don't have obesity and you just want to trim down. You can use it temporarily and get amazing results because of the safety profile. But um, AOD, what it does, what it's been shown to do is it stimulates lipolysis. So that is the breakdown or destruction of fat, um, and it's it's been shown to inhibit lipogenesis or the transformation of non-fat food into fat, into body fat. And so this has been shown in the lab testing, animal testing, in multiple pathways. And currently there are clinical trials that are supporting the use of AOD in osteoarthritis, hypercholesterolemia, and then also in bone and cartilage repair. And so part of why it can, it's being used in kind of these arthritic uh, components where you've got bone and, and um, cartilage repair is because the, A, the AOD 9604 is working on the growth hormone, which makes your joints younger, makes you feel better. You sleep like a champion on this, and that's where you really can burn some weight. So, so um, for those of you who are wondering how, you know, are, are there studies on this? Well, well, absolutely. Um, one of the studies uh, that showed um, human growth hormone has fat loss properties, making it a potential candidate to treat uh, obesity. There's six randomized double blind placebo controlled trials were performed with AOD 9604. Special focus was, was given to undesired effects associated with human growth hormone treatment, increases in IGF-1 levels, insulin resistance, and impaired glucose tolerance 
blood samples were analyzed for pre presence of anti-AOD9604 antibodies to exclude immunogenesis. Um, the results, the AOD had no effect on serum IGF-1 levels, which confirms the hypothesis that it doesn't activate this. The results of oral glucose tolerance tests demonstrated that in contrast with human growth hormone, AOD9604 has no negative effect on carbohydrate metabolism. There were no anti-AOD9604 antibodies detected in any of the patients. And none of the studies, was there any serious adverse event related to the intake of AOD9604? So the conclusion, AOD9604 displayed very good safety and tolerability profile indistinguishable from placebo. AOD9604 did not result in any adverse association with full length HGH treatment. So for those of you who've done the HGH, this is much safer. So, um, so yeah, very well. And it's nice that that serum, you want the IGF-1 in the muscles and in the tissue. You don't want it in the serum. That's where it can be too pro-growth and that's where it can be cancer causing. So here's thymosin alpha-1. Okay, so that's... So so Reagan, if um, let's say I wanted to do AOD uh, 9604, yep. um, would I also want to, so can you do multiple peptides at the same time or do you just want to focus on one? Absolutely. Most of the, um, the doctors, researchers who are, are using peptides, they're finding that um, you can, they'll use three or four peptides at the same time. So you can do like the AOD 9604, you can use SARMs with it, and then you can be doing like a BPC 157 and a cerebral lysin for the brain. And that's like, that's going to make you feel like, uh, you know, just a rock star. Yep. You get an IV of stem cells and you're just like, talk about new life in your body. Yeah. yeah that's amazing. Awesome. Yes. So, um, Okay. Uh, any any other questions? Appreciate it. Yes, it is the AOD 9604. Um, okay, SARMs. So let's talk about the selective androgen receptor modulator. Now, SARMs is great um, because uh, I've, I've looked into SARMs for years. I tried it about three, maybe five years ago, but it was not from a, there, there was no pharmacies that I trusted that were making this. And so now with tailor-made compounding, They've got some brilliant, um, brilliant uh, capabilities of making these and so uh, and very safe. Um, so what the selector of androgen, first of all, what is an androgen? An androgen are those, those male hormones. And yes, females, women on this, you guys have the male hormones. Male hormones, once again, this is like your testosterone. Um, and if you look at this, the SARMs, they provide benefits of inducing kind of the anabolic uh, impacts uh, like increased testosterone. It includes increased muscle mass, fat loss, bone density, while you have a lower risk of any unwanted side effects. Um, so you're not gonna have the side effects of like an increased DHT, which is going to cause you to go aggro and lose all your hair. Um, so it's, it's a very safe um, way of all it does basically is it makes the androgen receptors because you can have, we've tested patients' testosterone and we say, well, what's your total testosterone? And it's high. And what's the available testosterone? And that may even be high. And we say, well, why are, why are your body, you have all these symptoms of low testosterone. You're grumpy. Grumpiness, by the way, is the number one sign that, that you're your man or you as a man may have some testosterone issues and grumpiness usually hides depression and lack of motivation for men. So, so if they're being all grumpy and aggro on you, like the grumpy old man effect, they need some testosterone. Otherwise they got to wait for a while, wait for a few more years and then their testosterone will get so low that estrogen starts peaking and then they'll get really, really nice and they'll be the happiest person on earth and they'll, They'll just be like, you know, they'll be loving and they'll, they'll cry at commercials and, and uh, they won't be as male anymore. So that's called <laughs> andropods. So, um, so this is interesting, but SARMs, what they do is all they do is create receptivity on the receptor sites so that the testosterone can dock preferentially where it needs to and get utilized by the cell. And so uh, they have a very similar therapeutic outcome to androgen therapy, 
without an increase in androgen levels. So they're not going to manipulate all the, you know, your, your DHEA is not going to go sky high and your testosterone, testosterone is not going to go sky high on SARMs. Um, all they're going to do is open up the receptors so that you can get the hormones where they need to go. And especially if you've got high sex binding, sex hormone binding globulin, um, this can be a very effective treatment for getting the hormones to dock preferentially right where they need to go instead of circulating. So, um, so very interesting using this. Uh, the other thing that you'll, you'll find is that they are not liver toxic. Um, they can be uh, administered in an injectable form. They can be applied topically, which is what I'm using now. I've also done it orally where you have drops that you put uh, in your mouth and you swallow it orally. So SARMs, there's multiple dimensions with SARMs. And um, what they found is uh, the anabolic effect is roughly the same or greater than if you're using testosterone. But once again, it's not changing your blood levels, so it's not going to diminish your body's ability to produce testosterone. So this is kind of like using an herb, um, like tribulus is one of the common herbs we use to increase testosterone. Tribulus does not put testosterone into your body. It just helps your endocrine system function better. And what a SARMS would do, so if you use tribulus with SARMS, that's a way you could increase your testosterone, but also get the testosterone where it needs to go. So uh, very... Uh, potent um, properties with it. It's also been shown to produce dose-dependent increases in bone mineral density and mechanical strength and de decrease body fat and increase lean body mass. So um, a lot of different studies. You know, one of the conclusions of the study is that it was safe, had favorable pharmacokinetic profile lean, and increased lean body mass even during the short period without a change in prostate specific antigen. So if you're worried about your PSA going up, which is one of the concerns we have when our patients get on growth hormone or testosterone, um, this uh, showed it did not change your, the PSA. And then, um, you know, there's other, there's other studies going on with the SARMs. So pretty interesting, Cade. What do you think about SARMs? Really, really cool. Dig yeah. it. All right, so I'm I'm building my stack right now of uh, the peptides I'm gonna I'm gonna be getting on. So um, I got to get AOD nine six zero four. Yep. Um, oh, so Laura um, asked a question. So where does one get a peptide? You can actually you can get it from our office. It's, um, so you it's, can, they are prescription based. Yeah. Just so you guys know. Yeah, so we we uh, work with TaylorMade. Um, you have to work with uh, one of our medical providers, and uh, we get a prescription and have it ordered in, and we'll have it there for you. Yep. Um, so call in, get an appointment, and then we can go from there. Yep. Um, okay, so the final one, and yes, I'm doing much better. So the final one is IGF-1. And IGF-1, I did this, um, it was when, uh, so I went down to St. George and Cade taught me how to, um, what's that called, wake surf on your boat, Cade? Yeah. That was wake, so wake surfing. fun. And IGF-1 just, you know, kind of makes you feel like youthful, like, like my balance was spry, my muscles, I just recovered really well, I had a ton of energy. Um, and it's, it's been consistent. I can't say it's as peaked as it was when I was on IGF-1. I did it for about two weeks. And IGF-1 is one of those growth-promoting hormones. Uh, it's called insulin-like growth factor is, is what the IGF is. And what that does is it allows your muscles to recover better. Um, it's a great way of building um, uh, energy, but it's also produced from your liver and produced from your muscles. And so, so this is one of the things we were talking about earlier with the AOD uh, 9064 is it does stimulate growth hormone, which elicits IGF-1, but the IGF-1, you don't want it circulating in your blood. So you want that to be even, otherwise it can be pro-cancerous. But what the, uh, this peptide has been shown to do is, is actually been very safe. So uh, you'll find IGF-1, it's secreted, uh, it's an endocrine hormone. It's secreted by the liver. It also is, is uh, a paracrine hormone. So it's, it's sending signals and receiving signals in your body. So it's a really smart hormone. 
and it is used for proliferative, proliferative and growth effects. So it's really important. I just had a stem cell IV and I said, I want to, I want to just increase the, the promotion and the growth of the stem cell. So I'm going to use IGF-1 with my stem cell infusion. And it was just uh, it, it, amazing. I mean, I definitely felt like I shaved off about 10 years on my balance, my ability to be spry and jump around, learn new things. I mean, I picked up wake surfing pretty darn quick, but not that it's super technical, but I think I picked it up quicker than I would have if I was not on it. Oh, yeah. And plus, um, very, it picked it up super quick compared to most, so. And what about the music you were playing? That might have had an impact. I mean, AC that does, that does help. Does seem to help. So we can't really. I mean, this is we can't really. Well, I get think. It. I think the argument would be is uh, like ACDC does increase IGF one. There we go. So if you want to really your IGF, <laughs> your IGF one and listen to ACDC. Yes. All right. So <laughs> and grow uh, a mullet. Grow a big old mullet and um, get a very loud big truck and um, spin shitties in the parking lot and you'll be right back <laughs> in Idaho growing up with me. Okay, so um, IGF-1, they're a family of growth factors. Um, they help with the survival of various cell types, including muscle bone, cartilage tissue. It plays a role in childhood growth and has anabolic effects in adults. It's uh, available for, for the use of growth failure. So if you have kids who just aren't thriving, IGF-1 is a great way. It also has a potential reversal of degeneration of the spine, cord, motor, and ac neural axons in certain uh, peripheral neuropathies. So um, it's very, very powerful as far as um, what you wanna do for fat burning. So IGF-1, um, some of the things that you'll find is it's uh, the, the secretory site is what's going to cause a, an increase or an enhancement of that particular function. And so this is something that uh, it's associated with reversing uh, insulin sensitivity. It reduces weight, it increases the metabolic expenditure. And so what I noticed is that uh, metabolically, you know, I felt nice and even on this. You know, I'd eat when I needed to eat. I didn't get like that like severe hunger. So it has some type of down regulation of the ghrelin. Um, ghrelin is that hunger hormone, but um, an overall just a better way to recover, a uh, better way to heal, um, you know, really great. So, so uh, we had uh, a question um, or just a comment in my country, we use ephedra in herbal medicine to, to stimulate metabolism to lose weight. So thanks for bringing up ephedra because um, ephedra is a stimulant. And the last thing you want to do, if you want long-term results, you do not want to stimulate your adrenal glands because ephedra, the problem with it is it will cause your adrenal glands to secrete more epinephrine and norepinephrine. And so your, your heart rate will get elevated. People have actually had heart attacks on the stuff. So, so not a fan of the ephedra. Um, so is ephedra, that's uh, similar to fentramine, right? It's similar to fentramine, um, fen fen, and um, it's uh, it's also found in uh, guarna, and so actually Mormon tea is um, you can find in in Delta Kid. You guys had a ton of ephedra. I don't know if you remember. Sometimes I chew on it just a little bit when we're out uh, riding motorcycles um, out in the Delta Delta Desert, um, and and you know the guarna when you're eating it straight from the plant is much better if you're gonna make a tea. It's called Mormon tea because the Mormon pioneers, when they're coming across the plains, they used to get these, these ephedra bushes and they would um, boil it down. Ma Huang is what, it's, what it is in Chinese medicine. So that was a little, little bit of a tangent, but, um, but still related. If you look at IGF-1, you're not going to have that massive burst of energy like you can get when you're on ephedra and then it comes down and, and the crash is the real scary part because that's where we start going for sugar. We start looking for other things that um, you know, satiate that crash so that we get our energy back up. The real key when you're having pure weight loss and when you're actually in fat burning mode is your energy levels are going to be stable. You're not gonna to wanna to be munching on something all day. Um, you're going to recover quicker. You're gonna feel like uh, your body's thriving versus you know, trying to catch up. 
and uh, that can be a, a bit of a, a challenge. So, so IGF-1, you know, if we're looking to build a great stack for you, um, IGF-1 would certainly, I would put this in your stack, especially if you are, you know, really, maybe you've done stem cells about uh, three months ago, six months ago, you had your knees treated. We'll just use that for an example, because I'm sure some of our patients on this have, have been through that. And you had your knees treated and your knees are feeling great now and you're starting to exercise, but now your muscles are getting so sore and you're like, Reagan, I know you want me going to the gym and working out every day. And, and I promised you on my life that I would not miss another day of working out, but my muscles are so damn sore. What am I supposed to do? And so this is where IGF-1 can help give you a nice boost. And so um, IGF-1 for those of you, for you men on here, especially, or, or women, if you, if women, the biggest thing, if you don't have any sex drive or if you can't orgasm, you need some SARMs. And so that would be a really good, that's a sign of low testosterone. And so uh, low testosterone is, is where you just feel like you're not thriving. And so now uh, that would be where we'd get you on SARMs. And for those of you who want to trim down, you want to lose weight in a very safe way, a way that helps regulate your blood sugar, um, also helps you sleep like uh, like a queen or a king, then that is where you want to get the AOD uh, 9064. So hope this has been interesting. Get yourself, um, you know, there's new medicine out there. I think just to summarize, like peptides are not meant to replace uh, proper lifestyles, not meant to replace a great diet, taking the right herbal medicine, the right nutritional supplements. It's not meant to replace getting regeneration going in your body. Um, the peptides are meant to be an enhancement for what you're doing. Yes, there are certain peptides that we'd use if you have a condition, um, you know, like if you're not thriving or if you have a child that's not thriving or if you had spinal cord injuries or cartilage damage, now we would use peptides for that. But, but we want to make sure that we're using a holistic approach when it comes to peptides, just like any medicine that we do at East West. We got to get the right test going for you get the right treatments. Peptides are just one of the treatments. And then make sure you've got the mentoring and the health curriculum so that you can keep and maintain your health independence. So hope this is interesting to you guys. Kate, any final questions before we sign out? Um, no, no final questions. I think just in summary, so we talked about some, some really cool uh, peptides here. So AOD 9604, SARMs, yeah. IGF-1. We didn't yep. touch on, you didn't talk about cerebral lysine, but you did say like if that's something for the brain, right? That, that's going to be next week is where we're going to okay. talk about the brain. So be Get moving on next week and uh, yep, we'll do it. Awesome. Well, love it. Really cool stuff. We got great comments. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll be back next week talking about brain enhancing peptides and love you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.